Psalm 41 is written by David, and so I'd like to ask us to put ourselves in David's shoes for a moment. As he composes this psalm 3,000 years ago, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, put yourself in David's shoes. As we'll hear momentarily, David has been struck by a painful illness some kind of bodily ailment. You know, the kind of ailment that you sometimes wonder if you're going to recover from. And you've probably been in a position where you thought, boy, I'd rather die than be in this position right now. It's just this kind of excruciating pain and you feel like there's no light at the end of the tunnel. You feel like your body is collapsing upon itself. And as David languished, on his bed of illness, as he says in verse 3, he also becomes afflicted with the thought of his sin. So now his body is weak, and, and now his mind is reflecting on all of his shortcomings and all of his failures. And you've probably been there too. You think, boy, what is going to become of me? I'm miserable. I'm, I'm a dreadful sinner. And then to make matters worse, we read in verses 5 through 8 that his enemies taunt him hoping for his death. I don't know if we can quite relate to that. I don't know if we've ever heard anyone say when we're very ill, you know, I hope you die from this. I hope you never recover. I hope you never get up off this bed. Just imagine how that would impact a man, the king, in this situation. And then we understand from verse 9 that even his closest friends turned against him. He doesn't name names here, but we could think of his own son, Absalom, who turned against him and instigated a rebellion against his own father. And in connection with that, David's own close personal advisor, Ahithophel, also forsakes him and joins the rebellion with his son Absalom. And so David declares in verse 9, Even my own familiar friend in whom I trusted, who ate my bread, has lifted up his heel against me. Can you put yourself in David's shoes and realize just how lowly he is sunk? And then answer this question, how would you respond? How do you behave in situations like that? How would you be comforted in this kind of dire circumstance? Well, what David does at the beginning and at the end of this psalm is he calls to mind two attributes of God, namely His justice and His mercy. In verses 1 through 3, he reflects on the justice of God, essentially saying, God will not be unjust to abandon those who have committed their way to God. He says, I know God to be a just God, and He has promised, as He says in verse 1, that uh, he who, blessed is he who considers the poor, the Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. And David says, well, I'm a man in trouble. I'm a man in trouble, and so right now I reflect on the justice of God. He's promised to be a help to those who help those in trouble. And by God's grace, that's me. God will not be unjust now to turn his back on me. He'll not renege on his promise to save needy sinners. So he's reflecting on God's justice, his righteousness, his inability to do the wrong thing. But then he also calls to mind at the end of the psalm the mercy of God. The mercy of God. Now David recognizes, as he says in verse 10, Lord, be merciful to me, raise me up. He recognizes that he doesn't deserve God's kindness. He's not worthy. He's already reflected on his sin. He says in verse 4, For I have sinned against you. He's not claiming his righteousness. He's saying, God, be merciful to me. But he knows that he can expect God's kindness and his mercy because of God's character. He knows God's character. And friends, in this psalm, David uh, sets a pattern for us to follow. He sets a pattern to us, first of all, to befriend the poor. As he says in verse 1, blessed is he who considers the poor. Uh, he sets a pattern for us to include outcasts in our circles. Remember the example of David 
showing great kindness to Mephibosheth, the, the lame relative of Saul, who had really nothing to offer him. We include those who are outsiders to us. We, we befriend them, and then we recognize that God blesses those who befriend the poor and the needy. And we also follow David's pattern here by recalling, in moments of weakness, God's justice and his mercy. Maybe this week you're going to face a very difficult circumstance where you'll feel like David on a bed of sickness with enemies taunting you, recalling your sins and your, your miserable past. At that moment, recall the justice and mercy of God. Plead his mercy. Be confident. But David here also uh, not only uh, presents an example to us to follow, he also paints a portrait of the Lord Jesus Christ. When David describes his weakness, he's describing the humiliation of Jesus Christ. His condescension from glory and majesty into this world of pain. Christ had a time of trouble, as David says here. Christ endured emotional torment within and without, physical pain beyond our imagination. And betrayal. Could not Jesus say with greater profundity, even my own familiar friend in whom I trusted who ate my bread has lifted up his heel against me. We think about Judas who betrayed him. We think about the disciples who forsook him. We think about Peter who denied him. And we ask, why did he do that? Why did he humble himself? Why did he endure this time of trial? Well, for me. For me, for my salvation, so that I would not have to endure this same kind of judgment because of my sin. Think on these things as we call to mind then Psalm 41. 